What's up, y'all? It's TTC, aka the Thunder Conductor, and we back for another banging YouTube video and Twitch stream. As you already know, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, and I want you to also go down in the comment section and tell me what your favorite Commander deck is, and then I want you also to tell me what your favorite CEDH deck is. And if you're on Twitch, I want you to follow. Have the notifications on. While you're on YouTube, turn the notifications on as well. But I want y'all to tell me now, if you're on Twitch, why you on Twitch live with me? I want y'all to say, what's up? What's up, Josh? Show in the chat, what's up, dog? Bro, I'm living my best life. What up, Lily Firefly in the chat? You laying on both? Oh! Oh, spicy, spicy. I want y'all to do the same thing like Lily Flyerfly. Drop down your favorite Commander deck and then your favorite CDH deck. Which, that, without that being said, I want to start off and just say, if you uh, love what we're doing here and you're looking for ways, more ways to support than just being here and being beautiful people, we have three main ways. Number one is our Thunder Conductor Proxies, my way to increase access to this amazing format that we call CEDH. Next, we have our Patreon, which gives you access, deeper access to our open Discord. Come on and join us, Thunder Conductor community. We have a lot of fun, but it also gives you extra perks to like to get shout outs, like shout out to our Patreon subscriber, Dre, you are the man. Thank you so much. Not to mention, you also get at abilities to ask me more deep personal questions and more questions of Mad Badge of the Gathering or music or anything and also get the perks of being able to get your decks live viewed on here and all these amazing things. So I'm always open to new suggestions and new great things because I want to make sure that this is done for you all first. Uh, and very lastly, if you don't care about Patreon, you don't care about Twitch, you don't care about none of that, you just say, I stumbled upon you, I like you, and I just want to support you for the one time, you can go down, link in the bio, get buy me a cup of coffee, it helps keep, keeps the lights on and help keep us what we're doing. But with that said, I got some spice for y'all today. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's stream, I wanted to just start out with a new segment that I'm calling, that I'm calling Prime Time with TTC. So with this being said, I know I'm not the only one who plays against very fringe, like a, off the beam path decks. And so one of the things that frustrates me is when I play against a deck and I like it and whether I win or lose, I'm just like, I don't understand it. I don't understand like, what do I need to be scared of? What do I need to be afraid of? Like, what do I need to counter? Cause I've been loving playing blue lately. Shout out to my model red community, but I love playing blue. So one thing that I want to do is what we're going to be doing is we're going to like be going into different decks and I want to share uh, as my learning experience with y'all. We're going to just read the primer together and just have fun, laugh. And I want the chat to always stay active and let me know if I'm missing something. Cause y'all be the goats. So we got Omnath. <laughs> Josh always says, Omnath is my favorite commander, but Najili is my favorite CDS commander. Ooh, Omnath, Loc Locus of Creation. Please send me that brew because I'm not, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm not Locus of Creation is the one where like each time a land enters a battlefield, you get a new ability. It's like you gain four life and then you get um, Sans black mana and then you get like, then you do damage to every, all your opponent's creatures and planeswalkers. It's, it's fucking great. So that landfall ability is like crazy. Um, ooh, back to back top 16s at chaos. Okay. It's a food chain combo. Ooh, okay. I ain't mad at that. Not at all. Um, but with that said, let's start our first prime time with TTC. Today we're going to be doing Tatiana, T Titiana. I don't know. Is it Titty or Tati? Tati. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> but we're going to be, it's Titiana, Protector of, uh, of Argoth. This is an older commander that got printed in Modern Horizons, but I think this, this may just be a reprint. Uh, it came out a while ago and basically she's a five, three commander mono green for three colors and two green. Yes. I have a thing for five minute commanders. I saw it and I said, mono red reunion, five mana, mono red, green, mono green, uh, Titiana, hmm, maybe, <laughs> but it says the ability, her ability says when Titiana protector of Argoth enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever a land you control is put into the graveyard from battlefield, create a five, three green elemental creature token and themselves like uh, Titiana is herself as a five, three. So uh, it, when I first saw this commander, I'm thinking like they're trying to do a lot of like landfall things like, like, well, grave <laughs> graveyard of all things and make infinite elementals. I just didn't see the lines. So I played against it. The person kind of explains it to me, but we're going to walk it all the way through together. Um, I know that has something to do with like command beacon and all that other fun stuff. So we got. Yeah, uh, long eye tight. Oh, tight. 
Titan. Oh, Titan. Titania. Titania. Oh shit. Oh, pre <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Like Titania. Like <laughs> I get it now. So basically, I can't read. Okay. If if you were not entertained for that first five minutes, I want you to drop a like. If you're not following, please follow me. That that was thank you. And shout out to Lily Lily Fire Game Firefly because I completely fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for sure. Titanium Creative Store. She needs private light. All right, so they also have a Discord. So if you love what we're doing, uh, the Brewer Hoon. This is Hoon's list. I just grabbed the one that uh, the one that I saw out of primer. So intro. <laughs> they, they, please laugh at me, Josh, because I'm talking about it. Just, I'm acting like I ain't never played green before. Like, like y'all. <laughs> All right, intro. Okay. Uh, Let's make this a wee bit bigger. All right. Titanium Cradle Storm TCS is a competitive model green storm deck that uses its namesake Gaius Cradle or similar lands to create winning amounts of mana to kickstart storm turns or create loops. The deck is proactive in its approach and runs a few combos with Commander. While still offering the ability to win through combat damage, the constant output of beat sticks place, places it favorably in the CDH meta, especially against ad nauseum, de ad nauseum decks. Okay. As well as stacks decks, as it can grind well, extremely hostile control decks can be overcome with a with the right setup and combo decks can be outpaced, outraced, hindering, uh, slash hindered with interaction slash denial. I'm wondering how green interacts. Let's see. You're going to enjoy TTS if you enjoy playing proactively, like complex decks and strategies, eh, want to match against uh, against many different archetypes, need re uh, resilience in a deck and want to be able to attempt winning multiple times. OK, I do like that. Don't mind finding your way through various lines of play. It depends. It depends. Uh, find joy in care and careful sequencing, solve uh, like solving a puzzle. OK, uh, are looking for adaptive play patterns. Okay, uh, want to play a deck that rewards you for getting better at piloting it. I do love that. I love like skill piloting decks. Are you already um, are an already in fact uh, in franchise player with proper rules and game knowledge? Yeah, I'm solid. Uh, live the life of an underdog. That is very true for me. I'm not gonna lie. All right. So when it comes to combos, the deck aims to you um, to usually go for one line. Uh, go from one line into another or perform loops based on clean infinite mana combos. Okay, so they are food chain. Okay, so they have food chain plus command beacon plus uh, your commander when the command zone. That's a win for me. I love combo in the command zone. So basically says if you have food chain. Command beacon and. Uh, <laughs> Titania, <laughs> I can't I can't get over it. <laughs> How did I miss that? <laughs> Titanium Priest of Argoth. Basically, this turns into infinite mana for creatures and infinite five threes, as well as, in as infinite Titanium ETBs. There are multiple ways to turn the creatures mana into regular mana. Lotus Cobra being one of them. OK, Lotus Cobra is whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. And I'm guessing you're sacking the command beacon in order to put Titania uh, back into your command zone. Oh, yeah. So you sack Titania to the food chain. You sack the command zone, putting it into your graveyard to put Titania back in your hand and you use the excess mana to make infinite green. And then if you have to use other colors because you're going to replay the command beacon or no, no, no it's going to re-enter the battlefield from to make Titania's ETB. You just infinitely do this over and over and over and you never cast a spell. Well, no, you do cast Titania every time. So you can't do this through Ristic study, but it's still cool. All right. Cradle combo. So they if you use Gaius Cradle or Nick throw shine of Nyx. Um, you can use Sylvan Safekeeper. I'm guessing this is your land sack effect to get your 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 piece, your land is the graveyard. You have Teamer Sabretooth, okay? And Titania, Protector of Argoth, okay? So this lets you get infinite mana, infinite five threes, while also enabling as many bounces as you could possibly want or need, okay? This is basically a Sabretooth Bloof as mentioned below, but it's the, um, the most frequently used one as it includes the commander, okay? And so with this one, you got Guy's Cradle or Nykthos, and I'm guessing you have to tap for a certain amount of mana. You want to sacrifice that land 
Oh, that's a way to untap it. And you, okay, I see, I see, I see. So basically, if Guy's Cradle taps for six or more, you then can sack the Guy's Cradle, the Sylvan Safekeeper. No, no, I'm lying. You need it to tap for a lot more, seven, eight, because you have to also bounce the Saber to, you have to bounce the Titanium to the hand. So you need, you need Guy's Cradle to tap for five, six, seven, eight. Cause you have to bounce for two replay for five then you'll sack the land um in response to the etb or whatever not or just play the sack the land and then replay titan uh titania and then uh, yeah you'll in you'll infinitely give things shroud but as also you'll be able to just net as long as you're making eight mana five six seven yeah eight mana you'll net infinite green okay and make infinite th uh five threes because it says yeah whenever the language put it from the graveyard yeah and they infinite five threes i wonder if they run that haste enabler land you know what i'm talking about like that land that uh not that enchantment that world enchantment whatever that is okay guys that's cool it seems like a lot but you're in green and what is the creature output looking like we'll come back to the primary second how many creatures did they run 23 creatures i don't know i'm actually not sure about this one you're running a good amount of creatures oh but you do create five threes every time a land uh land you control is put into the graveyard and you'll keep making more okay okay yeah so you'll net actually infinite infinite green pretty easily this makes sense okay uh let's see we have saber tooth loops teamer saber tooth plus eternal witness plus something that nets enough mana okay so we have teamer saber tooth eternal witness that's something that nets many usually infinite mana and infinite copies of a, a symbol uh accessible spells okay this can be achieved with multiple cards, even with pretty absurd lines like Nature's Claim, Candelabra of, T oh my gosh, of Talnos. Untap X separate lands. Okay. Another interaction will be Restore, Sylvan Safekeeper, re Reassemble, the Cradle Combo with Titiana, uh, Titania, oh my gosh. Um, alternative Teamer Sabretooth, Earthcraft, you can use Teamer Saber Tooth plus Earth Class Earthcraft. I know Earthcraft is it gives all as long as you can tap your. Ah, let me see. Earthcraft has to do with basic lands, and you can like tap your. It's an enchantment. It basically allows you to tap. Yeah, tap an untapped creature you control. Untap target bait to land. So you basically it's it's a it's a way to make infinite mana. It's pretty cool. Okay, uh, this one and the the vert. This version works with, for instance, Nyx Bloom Ancient, um, Utopia Sprawl, Land War Elves. Usually st uh, setups like these will occur naturally during storm turns. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna be fully transparent. <sighs> Nyx Bloom Ancient triples the amount of mana you tap for. Hmm, this is interesting. If y'all understand chat, if y'all understand this one better than I do, drop it down. Because I, I'm seeing how I anything with Nyx Bloom Ancient, I'm not surprised it makes infinite mana. But when it comes to Utopia Sprawl or Lana War Elves, that one's interesting to me because I'm not particularly seeing your enchanting a forest and it taps for any color. So now you can make any mana of any color. Um, and Lana War Elves, but you want to you want to make sure you're netting mana, and then I guess you're using the Nature's Claim. To destroy it this one i want you to drop if you're on uh if you're on twitch drop down how this one works or if you are on uh youtube let me know how this combo works because i can sit there and break it down but i'm gonna be honest like this is this is interesting this is an interesting one i want to see how the like how do y'all break it down because i don't even i don't even want to lead the folks astray on this one so yeah y'all let me know how the saber tooth loops is working on that one next we have outs so Titania offers multiple ways to close out the game with a few de dead cards as with as few dead cards as possible. They always serve another purpose and don't take up slots. I love hearing that um, while still using only um, unlinked places. Uh, resilience and adaptability combat win definitions are enabled by either a large board and overrun effect like group five wild speaker. Okay, so this gives you, oh, just overrun by minus four it and add, give them trample. Okay, good. Um, ultimate and or the pump 
uh, uh, the pump spell slash haste enable finale devastation. There's your haste enable. So once you make infinite mana, if you have finale devastation, you can pretty much just give all your creatures haste. Okay. Looping uh, non combat win conditions, looping Wrath's Edge. And so this is pay for sacrifice a land. Wrath, uh, Wrath's Edge deals one damage to target creature or player. Okay, so basically, you can loop this infinitely, do one damage to each person. Doesn't beat them if they have protection from the one ring, but it gets the job done. This also enable, uh, enables a strip mine, lock, uh, strip mine locks as well. Oh, to destroy all land so they can't make any uh, mana from their lands. They have to have non-creature. Those are kind of iffy. I'm gonna be fully transparent. Those type of win conditions that just only do like, like you lock them out with lands. It's kind of like Blood Moon. Look, granted, they can still tap their, their lands for Blood Moon. Like with Blood Moon, they just only have mountains. My only problem with those type of locks is if you lock people, two problems. If you lock people out of their mana via lands, they can still have their mana rocks, which is very popular in CDH. Not to mention Dockside is still a thing to ramp them back up, especially if everyone's leaning on their rocks and all the uh, a bit above to make mana. So, I mean, granted, you can't. I'm sure there's a way you can loop like a uh, nature's claim or some other stuff, but just thing to keep about, uh, keep uh, keep in mind. Not to mention number two is you need to be able to close the game out after doing this, because say if you get strip mine locks where you're locking people out of land, if you're aren't if you aren't able to close the game out eventually people will get enough rocks or enough resources all it takes is blue blue and black for demir plus decks to win with thassa's oracle and so it's just you want to be conscious about that don't think this is an infinite like a, a hard lock it's a lot more of a soft lock so we have ram through its target creature you control deals damage equal to the the power to target creature you you don't control if that creature hold on if that creature you control has trample, accidents damage is dealt to the creature's controller instead. Ah, can be used in conjunction with Nyx Bloom Ancient after it has been pumped by Finale of Devastation or return the Wild Speaker. Oh, interesting. Or turn of the Wild Speaker. So you can pump your Nyx Bloom Ancient or some other creature infinitely large and then ram through to kill somebody with the trample because Nyx Bloom Ancient has trample. Okay. I like that. All right. Uh, to one shot opponents, if they don't have creatures, just loop slash use beast within a beast within to give them one. Oh, okay. All right. That's cool. And you can loop beast within and ram through without access to, um, without access to a pumped Nyx Bloom Ancient in this case through eternal witness and Timber Sabretooth. And so yeah, eternal witness returns a car from your graveyard to your hand. Timber Sabretooth puts a, uh, puts a, returns a creature to your uh, hand. So you can bounce your eternal witness, play it and return whatever car you want from your graveyard and you'll reactivate team or saber tooth. And so this is just your, uh, your outlet. Okay. It's a little convoluted. That's the end of the primer. It's a little convoluted. I'm gonna be fully transparent. This is cool. Like, you know, uh, one, th the last part that we'll be doing with these segments when we do them is, is this going to be something that I'm going to add to my roster right now? The TTC verdict on this is I am unfortunately going to say no, not because I think it's bad. I've played against it. It's solid. The, of course, it's a mono green. So the card draw is always a problem and all the other shenanigans. Like it's, it's tough to, to draw cards in this. The reason I have to say no is because I want to understand the other combo lines. So if you're on YouTube or Twitch and you understand those combo lines, explain them to me. And then I also want to know if you've piloted this commander and the CDH version, I would like for you to tell me what what was what is the main determining factor in your win conditions? Is your opponents not doing something or doing something or are you doing something or not doing something? Because as of right now, the experience I've had against it has been very mid, not because it's a bad commander. Maybe the pilot wasn't the best representation of what this deck's full potential is. Um, only other thing that would make me want to run this is if, if it was turbo. If this could win from turn two to three, which I don't know if it could, but if it could, I'm all on board in this. Like, if we can quickly look through the deck. Got Allosaurus Shepherd, Arbor Elf, uh, Zor uh, Azusa, looking good. You know, Mermana Dorks, you got. Okay, you got a way to search for lands. That's to help get your combo pieces. Mermana Dorks. 
Yep, 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 yep. Removal and a great stacks piece, just great. Get lands back from your graveyard. Reclamation stage, stage more removal, that's creature based. Regal Force, card draw, okay. Savala, I'm sure you have Savala loop somewhere in here. Sylvan Safekeeper, we've already talked about that. Combo piece and protection for your creatures that really matter. Tylish Provisioner. Oh, it's ramp. Okay, so this one, whenever land enters the battlefield and you control, you can make a food token or a treasure token. There's probably loops to make infinite treasure tokens as well, which is really cool. Okay, I like that. And tutors, Eldridge Finale, Green Sun, got some more card draw. Uh, natural order is uh, Sakurachi Eater. Oh, Sack of Green Creature. You can search the library for a green creature card and put it onto the play. If they'll uh, put it in play as though it were just played, shuffle your library afterwards. Okay. Um, tutor. Uh, almost a pot, a pot effect, which is kind of cool. You destroy target land, search your library for a land card, put on to put in play, then shuffle your library. Oh, all right. So it's, it's cool. It's this. I've actually never seen this card reap and sow. It's just four, man. I thought it was one man. That's a lot of mana. Um, regrowth, restore, um, risk card expertise, card draw. This is really expensive. And you have. Uh, turn to me symbiosis. I love this card. Beast with sin, removal, more tutors, uh, untap effect, or you destroying target global enchantment. Is this just any enchantment or global enchantment? Non aura enchantment. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. More removal. Second one, so I search a library of the two basic land cards. For the okay, so you got some, some cool ramp. It's instant speed. Uh, you sack a land and look for two basics and you put them into play. Oh, okay. You don't even have to shovel them that Jones away. You don't, I mean, you don't have to put them into play tap. That's cool. Um, yep. Yep. Removal card, draw more tutors, interaction, protection, whirly. Uh, I, I would like to see a little more removal, but I don't know if, if green has any more viable tutors within their color. Uh, okay. Da, 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 mana ramp. Uh, surprised there's not more artifacts. Not even a grim model of CNR commander is five mana can help you get your commander out sooner uh honor you got the earthcraft all the other good stuff rada 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 okay yeah 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 this is fine 33 lands that's a lot of lands but i know we're a land fall decks if it was me i would immediately go down one land aggro and monolith but that's just me but with that said yeah i'm gonna have to just say no to this for now but if you have a deck that you want to see on um on this segment please let me know Please let me know. Uh, I'm always interested in learning more. If you had a deck, have had a deck that was frustrating to you or was like a little like a little iffy about that, just let me know. So this is prime time with TGC. And so let's get back into some more deck techs. Now, before we get into the gameplay, I want to just talk decks. What have I been working on? What are my main brews I've been working on? And just the, just the BS. Just, I got to share this with you all. What's up, Grace? Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow. All right. So first thing and the let's let's start with the OG. Let's start with the OG. So my OG deck, my first CDH deck, my heart, my first top, the, the first top 16 anything. Oh, OK. Yeah, we have um, amazing to meet you, Grace. My information's in. Uh, Discord and uh, go check me out there. All right, with that being said, we have Riona, Riona CDH, Goda's Baby Sis. We've talked about this list. If you're interested in the deep dive, go check out the, how do you say it? Go check out my, oh my gosh. If you're interested in the deep dive, go check out my um, last Ultimate Riona video on YouTube. Um, this one, it's not any major changes, but I want to talk about the sh how adapting to the meta because right now that was the major thing that I had to do with this deck. It's really, 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 really just important to adapt to these shifting metas. So every the everything's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same, but I have two major, two or three major switch outs. So I want to talk about those real quick. So if we go to the primer. We've already talked about Zayora's Justice over a braid. I stand by this. Um, I just haven't made the final like, oh, this is going to be gone. But it's already kind of it's already finalized in my head. 
Stoker for Mountain. Um, I took out that for Command Beacon. The reason I talked about this, I've talked about this before. When you're playing in CDH, removing stacks pieces can be detrimental and cause you to lose the game. I've lost games because I've removed Dran of Magistrate too early and didn't health of interaction to stop wins. You know, and so Command Beacon is a great way to say, okay, I'm locked behind a Dranith. I'm gonna accrue enough mana to on instep crack command beacon put it, the my commander in my hand untap for turn play my commander and a win counter just play my commander and pass you know what i'm saying like people will see that or what is he trying to do like no i'm trying to play my commander without removing it you know what i'm saying especially if you can hold up a piece of interaction like and even sometimes you can policy and be like yo no i have the removal for it here it is right here i just want to make sure that the tivit doesn't get online or that the Najila doesn't get online let's keep this behind the door i just want to make sure i can still do my thing with value and i will protect the Rionia, and if I gotta do it with a red elemental blast, we can fight over this Rionia, or we can recognize that stopping Tivid and Najila and Tim Necrom and all these other peoples from getting access from these busted commanders is good. So I like this because it doesn't force me to have to fight over removing, uh, removing uh, Dranith, which is just a I've it really sucks when I have to re use a piece of removal to stop Dranith. So going down in red did suck a little bit note that but it's okay because some of our new text actually is helping uh ne help us get around that next we took out overmaster i know mono red staple you're making instants and sorceries ttcs you don't you're casting a bunch of those you don't want to have them countered and it has a draw card you don't get to draw cards in red i hear that i hear that i hear that Instant speed is king, and it, I'm gonna be honest. That's a and B. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't want another one mana cantrip. I'm fine with it. The ability to not have my instant sorceries is not countered it would be better if I was a storm list, but I'm more of a one card combo list where I'm trying to win the combat celebrant, port razor, um, lightning runner, or things of the sort where I don't need my instant and sorceries to be uncounterable. I need my creatures to be uncountable so that's why rail elemental blast and other things of sort like that with that being said once i kind of shifted my mindset i realized that i want to try things so i tried claim the firstborn never really got to play with it but i decided to immediately switch over to manifold key because how powerful this synergizes with both mana vault and grim monolith both being able to you can turn go turn one mana vault or turn one grim monolith tap it to cast the key and untap them the uh, mana vault or grim monolith immediately and allows you to up surge and really do explosive things on turn two and i've literally had games where i won on turn two because i was able to go turn one mana vault into a manifold key and then go into turn two have enough mana from dockside and reonia and then was able to have so much excess mana that i went after after my second main phase Went, went straight into a seize the day with the extra dockside mana and all the other shenanigans to go straight into a seize the day plus the uh excuse me a seize the day plus a goto win where i just cast the goto o natural for 11 mana and i was able to pay for everything out of pocket because manifold key enabled me to go explosive so manifold key was a great inclusion it moves the reps pips down a little bit takes out another instrument sorcery but i think it was a great inclusion However, with the being said, I found that there's a certain number of instants and sorceries you, you want to have in your deck. And so one switch out I did, and this is a bit of a meta call. We can talk about this. This is the beginning of a meta call. I took out Dwarven Ruins for Spikefield Hazard. One of the big things to think about is that right now being a turbo deck and being playing more greedy and or risky can get you to just really overcommit to a play and just get blown out and dwarven ruins at times in addition to me not really being a fan of this land like i like um i enjoy the double red one more not spike field hazard i i enjoy i enjoy sandstone need a little more because even though it only can be used twice it gives me double red both times dwarven ruins coming in taps and then it taps for regular red mana but then double red explosively it leads into my it leans on my explosive personality like i love to play explosively and do crazy things but my only back pushback on that is that with us going down the instant source not to mention me just me not being allowed my person and also just us going into this meta now where i didn't want to have for it's so many reasons but Biggest thing is I really wasn't really filling the land. And then after making the switch out for Spikeville Hazard over Dwarven Winds, it slowed the deck down by one turn, but really solidified us in this mid range. What do I mean by that? Spikefield Hazard is a one minute instant that says it does one damage to any target. If a permanent uh, dealt this uh, damage that they would, um, would die this turn, exile instead. So the 
dope thing about this, and we we actually talk about this in our primer, there is a list of very powerful creatures that um just get blown out completely by this uh by this creature. And so down here we talk about spike field uh hazard and all the other good things. Some of the notable targets is boom number one, exiling or and everything that I say is also getting exiled. So check this out. All right. We have Orcish Bowmasters, Aven Mind Sensor, Fairy Mastermind, Esper Sentinel, Lothal Corrupt Sheriff, Birds of Paradise, Bloom Tender, and much more. So many different things that really can just get taken out by just a simple one mana spell. And also, also a big thing, it just upticks. Um, it basically upticks your uh, incident sorcery count that allows us to do more explosive things in the mid game And that's really where my head was going with this deck We're in a mid game I need to be able to do more than mid game and interact more so adding this piece of removal and losing a little bit of Explosivity really didn't mind me. It was like it's okay. I'll let it go. I'll let it go. All right with that being said we also Another switch out. We took out a win con being Mir Ma Miro style master for Braze Apprentice. All right. So, TTC, why would you take out Braze Apprentice? It's so good. It's so powerful. Why would you take it out? All right. Uh, well, why would you take out Mir Miro style master? It's so powerful. It is good. It's really powerful. I really do love it. However, it's not helping us in the mid range games. There's been plenty of time. It's a little clunky because it is also not a one card win con. You need to cast an instant sorcery and it. Braze Apprentice, um, shout out to my guy, uh, Fady MTG. He's been running this one for a while. Uh, basically, um, it's a it's a solid like card advantage engine. Not to mention you can get this off of a goblin engineer. So you basically can now see one two three four five extra cards per turn depending on what your storm turn was like or whatever it was and even if it's only one extra card per turn in red sometimes getting across that finish line is really good some people may say well why don't you just add in will of fortune that's really not my play style but i've been thinking honestly thinking hard about will of fortune being a viable thing um one thing i would definitely say Another reason I added Braze Apprentice over taking out Mirror Style Master for a Wheel of Fortune, even though the, the infamous turn one wheel is super powerful, I definitely want to uh, think very hard about, okay, how much am I giving to my opponents and how much am I giving to myself? A Wheel of Misfortune gives a lot to my opponents and not a lot to me. Braze Apprentice gives a lot to me and not, much, not a lot to my opponents. And so it's like, okay, T, I hear you, but I want you to talk a little deeper. So what do I mean by gives a lot to me? There is actually a combo line that I created for Braze Apprentice using Goblin Engineer. And I'll actually post a link to that um, in the bio where you can actually go from literally one Goblin Engineer into a Lightning Runner combo where it includes you having four Lightning runner Runners with your commander over one to two turns, depending if you have extra turn spell at hand, literally from a Goblin Engineer. And it uses Braze Apprentice and the one one uh, colorless uh, Thopter artifact that it creates. And so having a combo line that also is linked to it is just super powerful so that being done you get it mid-range we want to be able to draw more cards we want to be able to see more cards going down one con one win con is better even though we lose a win con we can still get closer to win cons faster not to mention i also love that you are also able to excuse me you're also able to get more interaction or other things that can stop people so i'm enjoying it as of right now nothing to go home and cr like you know Call up the folks, but it's cool. Uh, next switch out. Tough switch out, but I felt like it was good. This was actually inspired by not just Faded, but my guy Dre. I looked at his wrist and I'm noticing a lot of people aren't running Reckless Handling. I talked about on my video that I was running Reckless Handling because we're very bullish on being able to get Power of Heroes in order to turn Pyre, turn Reonia into a Goto if we need it. It's a Reckless Handling is a great like top deck draw to just get there. Yes, but no. Okay, so the problem with reckless handling is it's just objectively bad. It's objectively a worse um, gamble. I'm not even a really big fan of gamble because I don't like the gamble when I play. I like certainty. That's why I've really been enjoying playing with the color identity black. The problem with uh, reckless handling is not only are you playing double the amount of damn the amount of mana. If you draw it off a of whim and you have no cards to hand, it's basically an entomb. And the only good entomb targets we have in this deck right now is seize the day. So it's, 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 it wasn't that solid. I, there are times where I enjoy having it, but one of the things I hate about 
the reckless handling will not hate i am not favorable about favorable about reckless handling is literally if you go say if i have a lightning runner combo this happened to me multiple times where you need to cast two instant sorceries and lightning runner in order to make three copies of lightning runner and have the original one to make eight energy to go infinite okay the problem with reckless handling is you have to cast a lightning runner first in order before you do it and then but sometimes with when it comes to your rituals and everything you're trying to do it's just not possible to do reckless handling and lightning runner you sometimes have to lead with reckless handling or some other some other thing to get around something so i can't, i hope that was kind of explain explanatory it was it i'm just basically saying it's it, i still like the idea of the card i'm just I had to let that go. I didn't mind lo the same way I didn't mind losing a combo piece. I let this mediocre tutor go, even though we're mono red. I wanted to switch it out for something a little bit better. At first, I put in Torch Courier because I want to play around with pushing the haste. And I was like, ah, it's a mid card. It it's solid. It did what it's want. But the more thing I'm trying to do, and this is, I can't believe you're you're taking out a tutor. I technically put in another tutor. Worse for a mountain. Okay, we're in the mid range, folks. We're in the mid range. We're in long grindy games, and I. I want to hear if you don't like it if you're on twitch let me know if you if you're on youtube and you don't like it let me know down in the comment section but i put an oliphant as you all know i'm very bullish on lorian's revealed lorian's revealed in blue decks as a way to pitch to force a wheel to force a negation to march a swirling miss all the other stuff i am feel same about oliphant um, when it comes to pitching to your Fury of the Horde, you can pitch this to a Pyrokinesis and you can pitch this to a March of Reckless Joy. You know, these are cards that you will consistently and constantly see in your hand. But not to mention, like I said, we're only running 27 lands right now. We're a little short on the red sources. Um, I believe if I'm double checking, like our red sources are a little low. And this was a way for me to kind of like get there halfway like we're at 74 percent to our 76 percent red sources so when i see this i see this as an additional lead red uh land drop that can get me there a little bit closer when it comes to navigating like i'm down a land or something not to mention and this is my hypothesis about this mid-range meta when it comes to reunion being able to play a six drop because we already show viability and desire to play six drop because we have Godo as a win con and we also have Bloodthirster. So don't even say, oh, you'll never cast it. You'd never have six mana. You will have six mana. If you're in a long grindy game and this creature says it is a six four with trample, whenever it attacks another target creature you control gains plus two plus O oh, and gains trample until end of turn. You're basically saying to me that if I storm off with this, or even if I get enough, I can really go for a beat strategy as a backup plan. If we're in those long grinding games, that's what I love to hear. That means late game ad nauseum strategies, late game necro strategies go out the window and around turn four to five. If I'm not finding the win cons, but I see an Oliphant, I already have my lands like, okay, let's put this down and start hitting people for six, hitting people for 12, not even 12. If once we get, once the original Oliphant loses some of these signals from us, untapping it with them for the next turn it really allows us to move to being able to do 16 damage on the second turn it's out from the one copy created by Rionia and the original copy so do i think this is the best card ever no but do i think this card has crazy potential being able to be a land drop that also can be pitched to all of our red pitch spells and also be something that's slightly synergistic with our commander fuck yes and it's a fucking elephant bro <laughs> Just, can we have some fun? We're playing CDH, but we're having fun. So this is a fun include. As of right now, I've been loving it. I've pitched it already to a lot of red spells. I've never had to cast it um, for the six mana, but I've been having a lot of fun with it, and it gets a thumbs up for me so far. Losing reckless, hand reckless handling sucked. Losing mirror style master sucked, but Braze Apprentice and Oliphant being those mid range includes as well as Spike Foot Hazard being mid range includes. I'm like, yo, we're facing this mid range where you got to be able to go a little longer the game. So missing one, two, or three land drops because you don't have a land drop is just not acceptable no more. Lose like getting blown out when you stack your dwarven ruin, it's just not acceptable anymore. It you just can't get blown out because the mid range decks will just trumple over you and you'll never get back into the game. So. I've had a lot of success with it, but you'll see more of that later in the gameplay. Check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. All right, so that's my reunion list. That's my updates. Let's talk Tasker. This one, oh my gosh, it's been tough. It has been tough, but rewarding. 
when I say it has been so rewarding to play with Tasker because little bit by little bit, I keep getting better and better. And I don't know if y'all record your games, like seeing the uptrend of like your recorded games, you're starting to see more and more of like, oh, I'm getting better. I'm seeing these lines better. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. It is so rewarding for me. So here's a quick viewer of our list. We've made a lot of changes since the first Tasker video. I know, but I want you all just to soak it up, soak it up, soak it up. Because through these changes, we have opened up the possibilities for really crazy turn two wins it's it's crazy it's it i'm just gonna put it like this right now my tasker list has the potential to grind just as hard as tnk in the late game but be just as fast as rock's eye and it's uh, yes i'm saying it i'm just being honest it's crazy what this list can do now and so i want to talk about some of my switch outs and what really has enabled me and allowed me to do the craziness that i'm doing okay so if you're interested to see my inspirations, here they are as right here. I have eight different lists that inspired me to this list and a lot of gameplay. But let's start from the bottom. We've talked about most of this, so we talked about most of this already. But let's breeze through it. Spell Pierce. Not a fan of people being able to pay their way out of man uh, of my counter spells. I took I put in Mind Break Trap. Fucking love this spell. Being able to tap out on turn one, knowing if people go uh, rap, rock, rock. Uh, rock rock into a draw engine like mint like uh mystic remora or, or uh esper sentinel or Rhystic study is very powerful not to mention it stops storm storm turns cold especially because it exile spells also gets around effects that say this spell can't be countered well i'm not countering it i'm exiling it miscast another not really a fan of it i added in my pet card trick bind i love this my biggest thing i can say if you are running a non-red deck and you don't have fucking deflecting spot Add trick bind to your deck. It's a little clunky, but we're in the mid range right now. Right now, holding up two mana to interact is not the end of the world. If you're hard turbo, I hear it and I I don't do it. But if you're in anywhere, where if you're like a turbo deck, if you're a mid range deck that has turbo potential, which is slim, uh, similar to this one, this is deck is like sits perfectly between turbo and mid range. Then trick bind is really great because not only can in task can you loop it to stop your opponents from drawing you out either from abilities from what is that one land that allows you to draw three uh it is the threshold lands the it is the blue threshold lands there we go cephalic coliseum basically this is the one of the ultimate like you drew your library out cool i'm a cephalic coliseum you okay that's cool it basically says you pay a blue tap it activate only if you have seven more cards in your uh, graveyard but you basically makes the person makes that target player draw three cards and draw discard three cards if you have no library you'll draw your deck out and you will lose um not to mention we have a lot of draw engine our deck that don't say you may draw it's just you draw one big one is Tally and the Kind of Lord. I love it as a draw engine, and uh, but it's just uh, it's gonna force us to draw. And we have other things uh, of the sort. So with that being said, being able to just say that no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna lose that is really powerful because we can either loop the trick bind to stifle our own ability, or on the flip side, you can go, all right, I didn't stifle the only the our own. We we didn't stifle your ability. We or we. We stifled our own ability, which is really powerful because it allowed us to stay alive. And we can infinitely do this because it has split second. If they try to do it again, like trigger our Italian again, we can just infinitely add to be tasker again to put the card back in our hand. All right. So cool. Once again, move forward. I took out the island from Anomalous Schools of Water Edge. I'm not running any basics. I love this as a way to untap our commander, any other our powerful legendary creatures, not to mention the one ring is busted. Come on now. Is this a greedy play? Yes. Do I regret it? No. <laughs> so it's really good. Um, we've already talked about this in the past, but Teferi Master of Time, we took out Teferi Master of Time for Talon the Kindly Lord. I think this is a superior draw engine that if you get down early, can really even rival the amount of cards you can get from a fish or Ristic study because people don't have an option that, to not pay this. Not to mention this also being able to drain the table to life. I'm going to be honest, the drain effect is so much more powerful because now people can't do Dockside Loops anymore. So this is just super powerful. All right. As we keep moving forward, we have... Took out Time Twister for Praetor's Grabs. So this is an outlet. So if you have infinite mana and infinite Tasker loops, you can infinitely cast take Praetor's Grabs and take all your opponent's win cons. Not to mention, you can also just exile their entire labors, pass turn, and do the thing. So 
very powerful uh gilded drake we took that out for devoted drill we added in another wind line uh i will i love the devoted the devoted druid wind line i think it's very powerful and gilded drake it's a little harder to use this as a viable interactive spell since clone effects are so powerful as we move forward we have toxic deluge we have already four other board wipes in this deck you do not need toxic deluge in this li list in my opinion we have already tox roll we have culling ritual we have cyclonic rift and we also have um march of swirling mist being a, a temporary board wipe i mean a temporary board wipe to high creatures way if you want to take out stacks pieces and or if you want to prevent yourself from being killed by combat damage so being able to say okay i'm not going to put another sorcery speed board wipe and i'm going to move my towards more of a combo is really powerful to me uh that's my opinion i love also clone effects this list the original list that i inspired, got inspired from did not have any clone effects and i think where that's kind of a mistake in the metal right now clone effects are just powerful like i'll actually take a second drop down the comment section on if you're on twitch what's your favorite clone effect if you're on youtube drop down the comment section what's your favorite clone effect and i want you to tell me what was your favorite scenario that you used it okay so machine guy ever she is goaded i can literally one of the coolest things that I recently had happen to me in two games back to back is Machine God's Effigy. And we'll talk about this one a little more. Imposter Mech. These type of clone effects that basically are not creatures become invincible because, yes, people have artifact removed. They can just bounce an island permanent. But being able, for example, to clone a Tox rule and make a Tox rule unkillable or to clone another one, Orcus Bowmaster. And you they can't as easily kill it because people plan for creature removal, but not as easily for just artifact and permanent removal. Even though there's index, it's a lot harder to remove it because there's just more ways to kill creatures than there are non-creature permanent. So just something to keep in mind. And it's a combo piece too, come on now. Uh, if you're not aware, Machine God's FG combos with Devoted Druid because you can infinitely untap Devoted Druid by putting infinite minus one of, minus one counters on it because Machine God's FG specifically says it's not a creature and only creatures die by state-based actions when you give them infinite minus one minus one counters. As we continue, we took out Gataxium Pro for Noxus Revival, both to save us and recover if we mill our library and someone tries to draw us out. And we say we don't have uh, access to our trick bind, not to mention it's a great interactive spell that is free and instant speed. Say it with me. Instant speed is king. One more time. Instant speed is king. We absolutely love instant speed. It is just it's just factually my favorite way to interact so losing the ability to get that information the extra information for our opponent's hand and to draw a card it just cannot be rivaled by the power of pay two life i'm just going to go ahead and put a target card from my graveyard back on my library or pay two life you have interaction in your graveyard and man up i'm going to respond to your heuristic study trigger that our opponent can't pay for put the interaction on top of your library and now you can use it and is freaking great or in if you can kill the, all the devotion, you can add an extra card to your opponent's library and make it so they can't win with their thousands if you're able to get around the third, get around the devotion. So next, Simic Signet. Signets are important in this deck because we're, we, um, for example, Marnius needed infinite colorless mana. Marnius Calgar was my other list. You need infinite colorless mana to draw your library. For this deck, you need infinite colored mana to draw your library, okay? So we have to run signets because you can't use the talismans to infinitely create uh, colored mana because you'll kill yourself unless you have infinite life, which we do have a way to do that. But we'll get to that soon. With that being said, we took out Simic Signet because over Golgari Signet because there's also a thing to realize about this. If you look at the cat, if you look at the cat, uh, the activation cost, it's Simic. So you can either have infinite blue or infinite green. So we neither, so we don't need infinite blue and green. Not to mention, a lot of times when you're going into like a hole breaker horror combo, which is usually why you have to loop a Signet. You, you're usually going to sacrifice Tasker to a pod effect. So how that ends up working is though, because Tasker is back in the command zone, you need at least one black pip to recast it. But a lot of times, if Simic Sika is your only thing, you'll never have any grand ma green mana. You'll be just sitting there with infinite green and blue mana and no way to recast your commander. That sucks. It sucks to be in that position. So we added in Golgari Signet, even though we're going down in that blue pip, which is like a industry standard of blue decks to run the blue talismans and the blue segments if they run it but i believe and i've actually experienced with gogari signet in this case in use case is superior to sig than signet signet so keep going more for moving forward 
controversial effect. We took out one combo for another combo, but it is what allows our deck to win faster. All right, so we took out Dramatic Reversal, that is a, uh, and Isorev, uh, Isochron Scepter. We took both those pieces out because for me, I, it took too much setup and this deck doesn't draw enough cards comparatively to my Marnius deck or for, for example, Tim Necrom to be able to assemble all the pieces. You literally can have Dramatic Reversal, Isochron Scepter in hand or the tutor to find the other piece you don't have, but you literally just won't have enough mana rocks on board. So having to bypass that, we ended up leaning harder on our Devoted Drawer and Machine God's Evergy combo, but we took our Dramatic Reversal at first for Witch Call Talisman because I just wanted to up the tutors to be able to better support the win cons we have. But we also, we went into the Hoarding Broodlord line. So how does this line work? What is all these pieces I'm seeing? Slow down, we'll get there soon. We took it out because we took a tutor out for a tutor. Um, I wanted to have a tutor line in this deck, similar to my Marnie's Calgar, Calgar um, tutor line. And the point of a, what, a, what a win con line is, or a, a win line is, is when something can tutor multiple times. And similar to what's called Talisman, Hoarding Brood Lord's ETB ability can be used multiple times to do multiple tutors, which allow you to perform a win con line or a tutor line or a combo line, how I like to call it. All right. We'll get to the combo line in a second, but in the meantime, just know Hoarding Brood Lord is the centerpiece of it. And even though it's eight mana, you can't pod from seven from six to seven for our sack and our commander. It still is very powerful because we have Eldritch Evolution, Neoform. Ooh, I'm giving away. Just stay tuned. All right. Next we have, I've already talked about this, took out Ice Cron Scepter. We put in Reanimated first because we wanted to just play around with it, but we actually found Peer in the Abyss to be a superior win con to put it out. So we took out both a Dramatic Reversal and Ice Cron Scepter, basically for Hoarding Brood Lord and Peer in the Abyss. Next we took out Karn the Great Creator for Mango Horn at first because we were just trying to keep that artifact hate synergy. But if I'm being honest, like I shout out to one of my homies, Jean Luc sometimes and I, I learned this from him whether it was i can't remember if he told this to me or if i just kind of learned this sometimes having a little more greed in your deck is okay um, we have a very great really big counter package so being able to say okay i'm letting i'm letting mingle horn go but i want to add in saw in half both still removal it's creature removal that's maybe you can't kill a dock side but you can remove uh, you can remove a targeted creature for or like you can remove a creature that is problematic that you don't mind if there's two legendary versions like somebody's commander Just some cool, but it's also a combo piece for us part of the hoarding brute lord that we line up that we will talk about soon Now next we have waterlog grove. I took this one out because uh, I know it's the extra card draws the dual color. I really wasn't sold on it completely I took that out for Lorien's revealed same reason I told about Oliphant having an extra pitch spell not to mention it's extra land drop You can always take a land out to add Lorien revealed in I loved it. Um, however, I will say It's that strategy of sitting back on a Lorien revealed not to pay five mana to draw But to have it as a pitch spell or find a land is better for slightly slower decks, but because I increased the speed of this deck, I let the Lauren revealed go and it's actually been helpful. I love this card, but I let it go for sacrifice. And I said to myself, if I'm going down technically a land drop, I want to add a ritual that's very powerful. Sacrifice really enables one. These are one of the most stupid, poopy, crazy things with this deck because you can actually leverage sacrifice in the combo line. But if you see sacrifice and peer in the abyss in your opening hand, if you can get uh, your commander out, which has a cost reduction due to the delve ability, you are able to then go, okay, I'm going to cast my commander turn one, turn two, sacrifice and play my second land drop, which is two lands, sacrifice, peer in the abyss. That's four cards and you're winning on turn two. Four cards, two lands, Sacrifice and peer in the abyss. <laughs> if you can get at that point, if you can get your commander out turn one, which is as easy as J Lo or one of the other ritual ritualistic spells that can help you, or like your rocks to help get your commander out turn one, you are skating, bro. So this is a tur easy turn two win. I just easy game. I just I just do y'all some easy game. Light work. All right. <laughs> so sacrifice been loving in the deck. Actually, one of my uh, my subscribers actually put me on a sacrifice and actually been completely loving this. Next. The original risk was running Jace Friends Prodigy. I never really understood it. I added in its place Ken and Bonner Prodigy because I saw other lists were running it. But once I took out Isochron Scepter and Dramatic Reversal, I really found like uh, I'm not really needing 
these things anymore. Like I'm literally, I'm just like, I don't need to have my rocks make extra mana because whole breaker horse still works for mana vaulting a signet. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't need the extra pump. It, it was cool, but it became the spell that I pitched most times. So I, then I added in both the mixture because I wanted extra tutor. Then I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta kill my dollar. And so I let this Mullen mixture go and I added in Scholar of the Lost Trove, another piece of our combo that allows us to win one car combo. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Scholar of the Lost Trove is a really cool, it's a new seven drop. Uh, it is a five, five flyer that says when it enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant sorcery or artifact card from graveyard. So it's also a really cool okay, way to say, okay, my birthing pop got killed. I'm just gonna hard cast this, recast my birthing pot, and then pod, uh, then use another colorless and two life to pot away the scholar of the lost troll to go get the hoarding brood lord. Just put y'all in the more tech, but because hoarding brood lord's an eight drop and scholar of the lost troll is a seven drop, so it's a really cool recovery spell. Like you can literally, you can literally go if you're a hoarding brood, if you have, for example, a, uh, if you have, for example. Say if you don't have access to your Neoform to go to go through the combo line and you only have like an Eldritch Evolution, which is not a good example because you can just Eldritch your commander for Horde and Lord, but it's just cool to know. Okay, can we just be cool? It's just fun to know. <laughs> All right, with that being said, it's called the Lost Trove. I like his recursion and also just a five, five flying beat stick is really cool. Blocker for Tivit, even if it dies, it stops them from getting activations and it's just cool. Uh, I've been liking it. I've never used it for value yet, but I'm interested to see how it goes. I've been winning a lot of games off combat beats, so having a 5-5 five, five flyer, flyer is not something I'm against. Next, we have Dothy Voidwalker. Great spell, but we had another greed play that we decided would take Dothy out. Hard decision. I put it in for Spellseeker. But may I say, I absolutely love this as an inclusion for spell so you, like adding this in having this extra tutor to go get my neo form to go get my consultation to go get my tainted pact has actually been great and i actually won a game today off that ability because um the person had a de um uh, a deafening silence that says you can only your opponent each player can only cast one non-creature spell so i had a thasis in hand and i had a spell seeker and after mana draining their what is well what is that creature called they casted a They casted a Shieldred. There we go. They casted a Shieldred. It's the four mana Shieldred. Yeah. They casted a Shieldred, Shieldred the Apocalypse. I mana drained it, got the extra mana, and then on my turn, I literally went, okay, I can only cast one non creature spell. I don't care. I'm literally going to go uh, Spellseeker into Thassa. Spellseeker find the, uh, Demonic Consultation and went into Spellseeker and then Thassa's for Demonic Consultation. At that point, I was sold. Not to mention, Ain't a lot of sisters on cards. Ain't a lot of black women on these cards. You see that beautiful black woman? That is a queen right there. Y'all better respect this queen. Uh, with that being said, moving on to nurturing Pete Land. Took that out for Emergent Zone. Then I put in Cabal Pit. As you can see, I just was I just took out the draw lands. Not that I think they're bad, but I end up settling on the city of traitors. I think with the increased speed of this deck, it really allowed me to do more like crazy stuff when it came to uh really being explosive. You know what I'm saying? So having the losing the land later is fine not to mention the devil ability is really cool because once i lose the land i can still use it to cast my commander which is important because it's nice little synergy while still pushing us to that turbo line even though we're still mid-range we can be very effective turbo next we have ledger shredder took that one out for copy artifact then i took that out for Frexy metamorph after some time i was finding that the three mana was consistently sometimes too much because the deck makes a lot of mana but the three mana is just tough. I'm just, I'm going to be fully transparent. It is factually tough. And so what we ended up doing after that uh, is we put in imposter mech for two reasons. One, we can keep the clone effect in our deck, which I freaking love. I love clone effects in our current meta. They're super powerful. If we want to go the old natural copy doc side, that's cool. But if we also want to be able to go, okay, what if our opponents get our take control? And this is the fun. This is one of my fun lines I figured out. They take control of our devoted druid. If you read imposter mech, it says you may have imposter mech into the battlefield as a copy of our creature and opponent controls, except it's a vehicle artifact with crew three and loses all other ability, uh, other uh, all other card types. So it's no longer a creature. 
but it only can come in as a as a creature your opponent controls and so you'll say ttc you'll never your opponents will never have a Detroit. like either they have to cast one or you will have to, or they have to take yours with like a gilded rig or some shit you say that until we literally had a game yesterday where I was like, I had the imposter mech in hand and I didn't see the imposter mech um, devoted druid line on board, but I realized like it is a viable strategy to see imposter mech and devoted druid as a common line. I just knew I need to go in my bag and figure out how do I have my opponents gain control of my devoted druid. Enter in Oko Thief of Crowns, ultimate ability. He does a lot. He makes the food and the, he was really known for his plus ability, which is a great removal spell, especially in commander because it turns off commanders completely. The really cool thing is, though, you can minus five exchange control of target artifact or creature you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. Target creature you control with power lead uh, exchange control of target artifact or creature you control with target of creature and opponent controls with power three or less so you can uptick this one turn and the next turn literally know that i'm going to go for a devoted druid um devoted druid and posture mech combo minus five that booger give them your devoted druid then go in posture mech maybe because you don't have machine guys effigy or you because you lost it or you already played it or maybe because it's just you don't have a lot of mana, which can happen with this deck sometimes, but you're able to pull those really tight wins out very beautifully. All right. Next is and the last is a very controversial switch out, but I did it. Um, I took out Nezal the Primatide for Grim Monolith. And it's honestly more Nezal the Primatide for Scholar of the Lost Trove. And I took out Mi'kmaq the Mixture for Grim Monolith. I took out first. I took Nezahal out. I already knew I wanted to take it out because it no longer was useful in the deck. And I'll explain why. There's a combo line in this deck that works as so. It is a pod one card combo line, okay? Basically, this combo line allows you to win in one explosive turn with Neoform in hand, Task of the Golden Fang on board, four treasure tokens or two colors and one blue and one green, and these three spells in your deck. Scholar of the Lost Trove, Hoarding Brute Lord, and so on and so on half. How that works at this point is first, you need to have Tasker on board, as I've already said. You'll cast Near Form, sacrificing Tasker the Golden Fane as an additional cost. You're going to tutor Scholar of the Lost Trove onto the battlefield. Then you'll use Scholar of the Lost Trove's ETB trigger to target and then recast Near Form from your graveyard from free, sacrificing Scholar of the Lost Trove as an additional cost. Then you're going to tutor Holding Brute Lord into the battlefield, but you want to make sure to put Near Form in exile. Because that's the because it's scholar of the uh, lost strokes ETB effect. Okay, then you're gonna use hoarding brute lords ETB to trigger and to tutor saw in half into your exile face down. You're gonna cast saw in half by tapping hoarding brute lords to a convoke ability and paying two targeting hoarding brute lord to destroy hoarding brute lord and create two new copies of hoarding brute lord. We talk about that combo line using one card to explode the new things. We've just cast one card. And we've exploded into now at this point four tutors no one two yeah we've we tutored five times from one card broken okay at this point now from here you um you can use the last two colors you have um your, your last two holding brute lords et bees to find and help cast any two card combo in the deck this includes and not limited to sacrifice and pure the best the most common one also, you can do Thassa's Tainted Pact or Thassa's um, Demonic Con Consultation if you have two blue mana available. You can do Devoted Druid and Machine Guys Effigy if you have three colors and one green available. And you can do Sacrifice and Holebreaker Horror if you already have two mana rocks on board that can net uh, size generate mana, two blue available, two blue available, and one spell with the mana to cast and begin the, bo the bouncing loop. Okay? So it's really like possible to do a lot of crazy things um i will have the sections created where i'll be explaining each of these combos but for now just also understand that it's not just neoform so don't think well that's just one card in your card of 99s there's actually three cards in this deck that allow you to win well two cards that are one card combos with our commanders and the third card that allows you to win as early as the following turn so you set up you have one set of turn and then one win turn so firstly note one this combo line can be done with eldritch evolution instead of neoform this allows you to skip the, t the step two of the combo line i said but makes the combo cost one colors and one green more and but it does cost one blue less which is kind of like okay 
Take the good with the bad. Plus, also, you don't need to have Scholar of the, uh, of the Lost Trove in your library because you never you're skipping seven drops going straight from six to eight, which isn't too big of a deal, but can cause it to be once or slower to pull off because you will need very, basically more mana to pull it off. Note two, this combo line can also be done with Birthing Pod instead of Neo Turn over two turns. This allows you to tutor any seven drop onto the battlefield on the setup turn instead of only um, Scholar of the Lost Trove, because now you can go Scholar of the Lost Trove, you can go get Tox, or you can get Holebreaker. Or I don't get Holebreaker, or I don't re recommend that, because then it's gonna look like you're trying to combo and you're only trying to pass a turn. You need your seven drop to still be there. So say you can, for example, you can get Scholar of the Lost Trove and be like, oh, we just need a flying blocker, I'm gonna go get a flying blocker. Oh, we need the board to be wrapped, I'm gonna go get Tox roll. You know what I'm saying? And you just have it sit there. Scholar of the, Lo Scholar of the Lost Trove may be the best thing because you can have a flying block not to mention you get some free value from your deck so it's actually pretty cool um the thing to remember about this is that it does make the combo cost three colors more makes you have to pay an additional i mean you have to pay an additional four life and it would be one more turn uh it'll be one turn more longer and it will but it'll be one blue and one green less to perform which isn't too big of a deal but may cause the turn the cause the combo to be one turn slower to pull off which it it is um, we don't run extra turn effects in this library library but i mean in this deck but it's something to keep in mind now the last contention we now know we know about the three combo lines that let's weren't win anywhere from turn two to three with a nuts hand which isn't really hard all you need is an early tasker and a early tasker and a tutor to get the neoformer or just have the neoformer address in your hand another win line another thing to keep conscious is our note three which tells you our constraints the reason we lean more tutor with the two turbo with these lines is because there are certain stacks pieces that completely shut down these lines okay this line does not work if one of the more following common cd stable stacks pieces are on board i anything that hurts tutors prevents cars from being going to the graveyard removing creature abilities prevent creatures from entering the battlefield from graveyards or libraries prevent spells from being cast from the graveyard and or exile or prevents large storm turns these things include anything from avon mind sensor dothy void walker deafening silence dress down grab digger's cage opposition agent soulless jailer or anything akin to the listed However, if you're able to win under them being played, i.e. turn one to three, or be patient and wait out, the, wait out the storm, you can still get the win, okay? It's all possible. You just got to be patient enough to get it done, okay? So with that being said, that is the reason um, when we come back up here, you asked him, well, T, why did you remove Nezahal Primator and put in Grim Monolith? really as i said before it's really the really switch out should be and i'll we could do it together the switch out is honestly not that the switch out is honestly more scholar of the lost trove got removed for nezahal and i put imagine if grim monolith was over muddle in the mixture now we can ask the question well why did you have grim monolith all together i was talking to one of my guys and Basically, what they said to me, and I agree with this point of view, is that after pre presenting a, a Grim Monolith, that doesn't win you the game. It's the card to your 99. Having another ritualistic artifact that nets mana upon it being cast is just very powerful. And I've already done a lot of gold fishing, and it's actually shown me that it increases my win percentage, not even just because it I can have now more... Uh, mana to use in the wind but also allows me to more earlier get my tasker out and present those explosive wins but the cool thing is because we run such grindy cards like for example we're running those grind engines like uh seaborn muse we're running the grind engines like talion we're running the grind engines like toxtro i've had multiple games where i've won turn five to seven because people could not play creatures they could not get it down and my control package is so large and my interactive package they can't remove they can't it stop me from doing what i do so it's really tough to interact with this deck when you're really doing anything going up to 19 artifacts was a little bit tough i will say um it did suck a little bit to have to kind of navigate like knowing that like oh my gosh like a uh, oof would suck but that's where the turbo kind of comes in. But in the long run, 
we can make our land drops we're still a blue deck we still run the mystic grimoire we still run the aristic study we still run the sylvan as well as the one ring granted it doesn't work under the oof effect in our example but still great draw engines as well as just talion that just gets the job there we can neo form a spell seeker into italian very easy so it's really cool i love this deck and i've been having a lot of fun but with that said we've gone through our two decks that we're going to be playing today in our gameplay if you love loving what we're doing and you really and you're really interested into some really great grand play i want you to first smash the like button if you're on youtube i want you to smash the subscribe button if you're on youtube and if you're on twitch i want you to hit the follow button and i want you to want also want you to make sure you have the notifications turned on on every platform that you see ttc i'm really about to get into this amazing gameplay but i want you all to understand that this is not possible without you all and i just want to say thank you for everyone who supports us shout out to our patreon member dre but if you want to join dre check us out on patreon where you can get deeper access to our discord that you can get deeper access to all the content and get to know me even better not to mention if you say oh this is not really my thing i just like to play games we also got you too we got our uh i got our thunder conductor proxies where we have our premium paperback proxies to increase access to this amazing follow up mark called uh cdh and very lastly if none of that works out for you and you just say i just want to bless you one time i stumbled upon you on twitch i stumbled upon you on youtube i just want to bless you one time a fun time check us out link in the bio you are able to just buy me a cup of coffee and just keep living your best life so with that being said we about to get into some gameplay soon and we will be back but until then y'all be easy and be great